teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson on the method of development in which we will see the radial line development. In our last lesson, we have seen the rules and steps used for development of a right circular cylinder, a truncated cylinder, and an oblique cylinder using parallel line development. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. Parallel line developments are made from common solids that are composed of parallel edges or elements. Examples of these are cylinders and prisms. The cylinder is positioned such that one element lies on the development plane. The cylinder is then unrolled until it's flat on the development plane. The base and top of the cylinder are circles with some circumference equal to the length of the development. All elements of the cylinder are parallel and are perpendicular to the base and the top. When cylinders are developed, all elements are parallel and any perpendicular section appears as a stretch out line that is perpendicular to the elements. In our today's lesson, we will discuss the rules and steps used in radial line development and the steps used for development of pyramid using radial line development. Students, can you describe what a radial line development is? Let's see. Radial line development is a pattern created by drawing the edges of an object radiating from a single point. It's made from figures such as cones and pyramids. In the development, all the elements of the figure become radial lines that have the vertex at their origin. The cone is positioned such that one element lies on the development plane. The cone is then unrolled until it's flat on the development plane. One end of all the elements is at the vertex of the cone. The other ends describe a curved line. The base of the cone is a circle with a circumference equal to the length of the curved line. Students, in this lesson, we will discuss how to develop the pattern of a right pyramid, a truncated pyramid, and an oblique pyramid. We use somewhat similar steps to develop the pattern of these pyramid types. Before we proceed to the first topic, let's discuss an important concept, through length. In order to construct the development of the lateral surface of some objects, it's often necessary to determine the true length of oblique lines that represent the edges. For example, the figures on the screen shows a diagram that gives the true length of the edges of the pyramid. Each line representing the true length of an edge is the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose altitude is the altitude of the edge in the front view and whose base is equal to the length of the projection of the edge in the top view. The length of the top projections of the edge of the pyramid are laid off horizontally from the vertical line, which could have been drawn at any distance from the front view. Since all edges have the same attitude, this line is a common vertical leg for all the right triangles in the diagram. Well, students, now we will discuss the steps used for making the development of a right pyramid. Do you know what right pyramid is? Let's see. A right pyramid is a pyramid for which the apex lies directly above the centroid of the base. To develop the lateral surface of a right pyramid, it's necessary to determine the true length of the edges 
and true size of the bear. With this information, the development can be constructed by lying out the faces in successive order with the common edges joined. Generally, when we want to develop the pattern of a right pyramid, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top view of the pyramid. Number the edges of the pyramid on top view in the clockwise direction. Also number the edges on the front view in agreement with the numbering on the top view. Find the true length of the edges of the pyramid. Use the true length of one of the edges of the pyramid to draw an arc. Use the true length of the sides of the base as ready to draw arcs that will intersect the arc drawn in step 4 at points 1, 2, 3, etc. as shown on the screen. Join points 1, 2, 3, etc. to each other and to the center O of the arc drawn in step 4. Also, attach the base of the pyramid to complete the development. Well, students, let's do some activities to check how much you have understood the lesson. The views of a right pyramid are given on the screen. Make the development of this pyramid correctly. Don't forget to use the steps you have learned. Discuss with your friend and use more sketches to understand it better.
Welcome back. Did you complete the exercise? I'm sure you did. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Compare your answer with it. Students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing great. Next, we will discuss how to develop the pattern of truncated pyramid. Do you know what a truncated pyramid is? Let's see. A truncated pyramid is the result of cutting a pyramid by a plane inclined to the base and separating the part containing the apex. In order to develop the pattern of truncated pyramid, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top views of the truncated pyramid. Also, draw the auxiliary view of the inclined face. Number the edges of the pyramid on both the top and front views. Find the true length of all edges. Note that once the true length of the edge of the full pyramid has been found, the other points can be found by horizontally projecting the endpoints of the edge from the front view. With O as a center and OA as radius, draw an arc. Use the true length of the sides of the base as ready to draw arcs that will intersect the arc drawn in step 4 at points 1, 2, 3, etc. as shown on the screen. Join points 1, 2, 3, etc. to each other and to the center O of the arc drawn in step 4. Transfer the true length of the edge from the true length diagram to the development, locating 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, etc. Join 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, etc. with the straight lines and attach the base face and the inclined face to complete the development. Well, students, let's practice what we have just learned by doing some activities. The views of a truncated pyramid are given on the screen. Make the development of this pyramid correctly. Don't forget to apply the steps you have learned as well as your sketching skills. Go ahead and do that now.
Welcome back. Did you make the development of the object correctly? Wonderful. The solution to the activity is given on your screen. Compare your answer with it. Well, students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Next, we will look at the development of an oblique pyramid. Do you know what an oblique pyramid is? Let's see. An oblique pyramid is a pyramid whose axis is inclined to the base plane. It can also be considered as a pyramid whose base is parallel to each other, but not aligned to each other. As a result, the lateral surface of the pyramid appears oblique. In order to develop the pattern of an oblique pyramid, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top views of the oblique pyramid. Number the edges of the pyramid on both the top and front view. Construct the true length diagram that shows the actual lengths of all edges. Draw line whose length is equal to the true length of H O to 1. Then, with O as center and radius to be measured from the true length diagram, draw an arc. Adjust your compass to side 1 to 2 on the top view and draw another arc centered at 1 prime to intersect the first arc at 2 prime. In a similar manner, locating points 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime, etc. Join points 1, 2, 3, etc. to each other and to the point O. Also, attach the base to complete the development of the oblique pyramid. Well, are you ready for some practical activity? I hope you are. The views of an oblique pyramid are given on the screen. Make the development of this pyramid correctly. Don't forget to follow the steps you have learned. It's much better if you use your sketching skills to keep up with the time.
Welcome back. Did you complete the exercise? Excellent. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Compare your answer with it. Well, students, I hope you have gained a lot of concepts from today's lesson. Before we come to the end of the program, let's summarize the main point. The radial line method of pattern development is used to develop patterns of objects that have a tapering form with lines converging at a common center. Evenly spaced reference lines are necessary in this method. The reference lines radiate from the apex of a pyramid or a coal-like spokes of a wheel. The reference lines are transferred from the front view to the development with the dividers. To develop the lateral surface of a right pyramid, it's necessary to determine the true length of the edge and the true size of the base. With this information, the development can be constructed by laying out the faces in successive order with the common edges joined. Students, I want you to copy the exercises from your textbook and keep on practicing. Teacher, please assist your students on their needs while they are practicing after the lesson. Well, we have come to the end of the program. I hope you have enjoyed learning the lesson as much as I have enjoyed teaching it. In our next lesson, we'll learn about the radial line development of cone. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.